Welcome listeners to another chilling episode of Dark Tides and Other Stories. Today we'll journey the pages of a rarely told tale, taking place all the way back in the faded year of 1967. I'm your host and storyteller, Kyle, and I'll be guiding you through this riveting story as we delve deep into the shadows of Santa's past. Prepare yourselves for a truly unique Christmas special, Santa's Sleigh. A tale that'll leave your spine tingling and your curiosity piqued. Be warned, this story may forever change the way you see our beloved Santa Claus, for in this thrilling episode we'll uncover a grand mystery. What happened to the real Santa on that Christmas Eve, and why are we left with mere imposters ever since? Sit back, dim the lights, and join me in the darkness as we embark on a twisted journey that's sure to captivate your mind and shatter your long-held beliefs about the jolly man in red. Christmas Eve, 1967. Santa, as he always does, landed on the stone's roof. This year, only their little Lexi made the nice list, while Tony, the eldest of the children, took a deep dive off the nice list and found himself firmly entrenched on the naughty list. Santa descended the chimney, his feet landing on the bottom with a soft thud while a cloud of timeless dust engulfed his feet in a swirling dance. In a sudden jolt of pain, Santa clutched his chest, his bag slipping from his grasp in fear of something sinister. As his gaze fell downward, he discovered an arrow firmly lodged in the right side of his suit. He felt an entirely novel sensation. Pain. Something he had never encountered before. Yet alongside this unfamiliar ache, there lingered another emotion. The pain awakened something profound within him a sort of defense mechanism. It coursed through his being, resonating like a beautiful Christmas carol. Holy shit, I got him! Santa instantly recognized the voice of Tony, who had just turned 18 and possessed a level of mischief that rivaled even the most seasoned adults. Two additional teenage boys swiftly approached Santa from behind the couch. Grab his bag, exclaimed the slender, red-haired youngster. Matthew and Isaiah, Santa called out. You're not on the naughty list. The duo pressed their relentless advance. Santa, desperate and panicked, but still with a twinkle in his eye, delved into his bag in the hope a gift would stop this attack. But instead, the bag produced a set of wooden toy swords. Perplexed, he took a sword in each hand in the hopes of scaring the boys off. The two boys were already in too deep to halt their hostile duel. Just as Isaiah lunged forward, Santa's enchantment transformed the once dull wooden blade into a razor-sharp steel edge. Mr. Claus plunged the knife in his left hand into the boy's sternum, delivering a forceful downward cut that sliced him open from chest to belly. The meager remnants of muscle could no longer contain his insides. Matthew attempted to halt his movement, but he was already sprinting at full speed when Santa's blade found his way into the crown of his head. In an instant, Tony witnessed his best friend Matthew's body go limp, collapsing to the ground like a sack of coal. Santa, ever composed, nonchalantly wiped his blades clean on his exquisite velvet jacket, exchanged a glance with Tony and vanished effortlessly up the chimney. In his sleigh, now perched atop the house, Santa took a moment to assess himself. Blood trickled from his wound, staining his once pristine coat a deep crimson. So much blood, Santa whispered, his voice barely audible. It's strangely beautiful. Perhaps the essence of Christmas is trapped within the naughty listers yearning to be set free. With a firm grip on the reins, he cracked them and soared into the wintry sky, disappearing into the night. Christmas Eve of 1969, the once warm and jolly Santa Claus had apparently lost his mind two years ago. Santa failed to make an appearance on Christmas in 1968, sparking the widespread interest of the Stone family's tragic tale. The horrifying news of two young boys brutally murdered in their sleep by Santa sent shockwaves throughout the nation. Seeking respite and answers in the hope of restoring his faith, Santa vanished into a world hidden away from the watchful eyes of humanity he had begun a transformation on his workshop. Carol Jenkins, a 17-year-old when the boys were murdered, was a tenacious and curious reporter. She also happened to be the Stone's next-door neighbor. Carol did not believe the story of Santa climbing down a chimney just to kill two boys in their sleep. She had heard whispers of horrifying events taking place in the isolated forest near the North Pole after that incident. The holiday season, now heavy with a mixture of terror and disbelief, guided her to unravel the truth. Carol had no clue what would await her when she arrived at Santa's village. Her plan was to arrive at his workshop early Christmas Eve in the hopes of bringing back the Santa we all loved as children. Carol treaded the dark, twisted path leading to the heart of this forest, and ominous presence sent shivers up her spine. The stories she had heard of the village and surrounding area did not paint a picture like this. The trees gnarled their branches like bony hands reaching out to clutch her. Chilling frostbite crept upon her skin as she went deeper and deeper. The wind whispered terrifying lullabies, weaving a nightmarish atmosphere. 
Among the sinister forest, Carol stumbled upon an ancient, decrepit village concealed beneath layers of fallen leaves and snow. A solitary sign emerged, barely visible above the snowdrifts, displaying the name Rovinami. The buildings blended in with the snow-piled mountains, making them difficult to distinguish. Surprisingly, there were no footprints in the village, and the elves were nowhere to be found. Her guts screamed at her to flee, yet the burning desire to expose the nightmarish truth kept her focused. Summoning all her courage, she ventured into town. Each building proudly displayed its name, from the tailor shop and cobbler to the intriguing Den of Misfit Toys. However, it was the toy workshop that stood out, distinguished by the faint wisp of smoke escaping from a pipe atop its roof. As she gently pushed open the wooden door, its hinges betrayed her presence with a laborious and attention-grabbing creak. The door's somber melody unveiled an unholy scene before her. The sickly sweet scent of decay and rust filled her nostrils as she surveyed the room. A nauseating concoction of fear and revulsion settled in her stomach. The workshop, once full of joy and laughter, now stood as a grotesque abattoir, displaying the horrific results of Santa's twisted psyche. Elves scurried to and fro, their once vibrant green attire now marred by the somber hues of brown and red, a poignant testament to their despair. Strapped on tables were remnants of naughty listers, flayed open like grotesque jigsaw puzzles. Santa's madness and despair had manifested in his monstrous creations, a personification of his shattered faith. His intention, to harvest the body parts of the wicked and assemble them into creatures he deemed worthy of the nice list. Carol's heart raced, pounding relentlessly in her chest as she glanced across the scene before her. She heard a familiar tune. Then in the madness she spotted him, wearing his Christmas best. Santa. He was humming a dark and hopeless version of Jingle Bells. She had stumbled upon the master himself. His once rosy cheeks, now gaunt and sallow, stretched over malicious grins lined with jagged teeth. His once kind eyes, now crazed and vacant, revealed a horrifying cosmic secret that humanity could never fathom. It took her a few seconds to notice his gaze was fixed on her. Frozen with terror, she watched as Santa advanced towards her. He floated across the floor, wielding a rusty saw and still humming his twisted rendition of Jingle Bells. Her entire life flashed before her eyes, yet one single thought prevailed. She must escape this nightmare. Santa was gone. Summoning every ounce of courage, Carol lunged for the door, leaving the workshop of horrors behind. Fleeting glimpses of Santa's monstrous creations, his nice listers, haunted her peripheral vision as she bolted through the village into the forest. A symphony of distant screams molded together in a Christmas carol, a horrific chorus of her impending doom. Breaking through the tree line, Carol found herself on the edge of a ravine, a moonlit river raging below. There was no turning back now. Spurned by pure adrenaline, she leapt, plunging into the icy waters, her last refuge from this unspeakable terror. The water took her breath away. She struggled to get to the surface. Once she finally did, the silence of the night was broken by distant bells. That ominous jingle echoed throughout the night sky. While scanning the horizons for the origin of the sound, her attention was caught by a brilliant red light emerging from the workshop's direction. It was Santa's sleigh dashing through the snow. He shouted, now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, in a grotesque vocalization as he descended upon her. Rudolph led the charge with Santa in tow. All Carol could do now was watch. She was done for. The sleigh closed in on her, certainly going to run her down. Then, at the last possible second, Rudolph took to the sky. Carol's reflexes forced her to duck. As she stood up, she peered directly into Santa's eyes. A wry grin spread across his face. Congratulations, Carol. You've made it onto the nice list. Santa sneered before flying off into the night, leaving Carol alone and shivering in the cold waters. As she watched his sleigh disappear in the distance, she couldn't shake off the feeling that this was just another twisted game. But one thing was certain. She had never been more grateful to be on the nice list. She had escaped the clutches of Santa and his workshop, but she knew that this was only a temporary reprieve. Santa would need help if he was going to free the Christmas spirit that's trapped inside the naughty listers. That's when Carol made the decision she would become a hunter. She would train herself in all forms of combat and survival skills, building her strength and resilience in order to help Santa preserve the nice list and eradicate the naughty list. Thank you for joining me today on this chilling Christmas odyssey through Santa's sleigh. As our enigmatic story reaches its haunting crescendo, let us take a moment to reflect. The real Santa disappeared without a trace in 1969, leaving behind a world of weary doubts and strange imitations. 
Could there be something darker lurking behind the warm and inviting facade of our contemporary holiday traditions? What hidden tales from the past still creep unbeknownst to us through the corners of our festive celebrations? But alas, we must bring our tale to an end. Leaving you, our dear listeners, with these unsettling questions. Thank you all for listening. Please follow and share us on all our platforms. If you'd like more access and even to help us in the stories, check out our Patreon. Until our next mysterious voyage, I bid you all a good night. And remember, though the sea of dark tides may seem all-encompassing, stories are the lighthouse that guide us toward the haunting truths that lie beyond. Happy Holidays.